Okay, this is game three of If I Knew Then. So developing the knight, keeping it nice and simple and straightforward, developing the bishop so we can go and castle. And we castle. So it's all pretty simple, nothing extraordinary in the game at all. It is a three minute game, zero increment. So you have to move a little bit quick, but not super quick. So we take this opportunity to attack the center. So we want to try and manage the center and get rid of this center if we can. Don't really want to lock it down. So I think we're fighting for the initiative in this little section. So they grab and we grab with the knights. They hit us, we move the knight out of the way. All simple stuff. They develop their bishop. We get our bishop out and support the bishop, but getting the queen off of the back as well, linking the rooks up. Their queen moves off the side, so at this point we're thinking let's get our queen off of that side as well because we don't want to be facing the rooks if they're going to start charging down the centre. Obviously with the position of their queen, they're potentially looking to get some type of battery situation going here. Potentially. So the rook comes across and we bring our rook across as well to mirror the, eff um, the effect. And we bring the knight up, attacking the queen. So we take the knight off the board and just grab because we've now got a momentary advantage in that sense of position by grabbing the pawn also attacking the queen queen moves so we can attack the queen again so a little bit of harassment but trying to keep it simple just trading off as best possible simple capturing as it can see, it's showing an advantage for White here. And that was a quick knee-jerk reaction, which really didn't need to be done because looking at the tail of the tape, there was no need for me to actually take because if we did take, well, we did, this pawn is going to be fought and supported by the bishop. So we would lose a minor piece in that situation. So when we captured, we didn't realize that the bishop was supporting the pawn. We thought it was just a straightforward exchange type thing. And we're going to be able to move our piece out of the way. So that's the knee jerk reaction, doing the blitzy type stuff. You kind of lose focus and the tunnel vision, focusing on one particular area and not looking at the remaining pieces that are supporting each other. So that's the takeaway from me for this particular game, especially anyway, is around just take that moment to breathe a little bit. You've got plenty of time to take that opportunity to look at maybe a forward look of one move or two moves, but you really have to take that time or else you just come a cropper. So we did capture, so that was a big error, but the opponent didn't take advantage of it. And that is a very key thing throughout every chess game that we mention really is that when you do your evaluations afterwards, it's up to the, the opponent to actually see those opportunities that the computer is saying are advantageous for them. If they do, then that's fine. You know, then they're supremos and they're playing really strong. I would say 85% of the time, the players don't see the opportunities that are available to them which is a high percentage based on my own experience i'm not speaking for anybody else 85 percent is, is quite it's quite high for people not seeing those stronger moves so in retrospect yes they blundered in a sense but we blundered so taking away from it just take that moment to have a look at the position on the board before you make the move basically so we got away with it on that occasion. So the knight comes up, captures, captures. So we're just trying to simplify as best possible. And now we're looking to see if we can potentially get a trade off of the queen. We're supporting the pawn at the moment. So it's all basic, nice, simple um, chess at this moment in time. Obviously, this is going to be happening at some point. Um, so smaller piece attacking there, higher piece. The bishop moves back. Now we're repositioning our bishop, don't want the bishop to be in trouble. We want the bishop maybe to be supporting at some point, maybe coming up and attacking, maybe coming here. 
not too sure, depending on what the opponent is actually going to do. The king moves down, so we can now look to basically stop the attack here. So they could have attacked, but I don't think it would have been anything major. You know, so if they had gone and attacked, yeah, so let's let's do it. So if they had gone and attacked, then all we have to do is move it out of the way. It's just got a pawn. And as the system's showing, it's only 0.1. So there's nothing major there at all in any way, shape. Nothing for us to lose any sleep over anyway. So I didn't do that. And we were expecting this pawn. We were waiting for this pawn to come down. Felt like forever and a day. And we moved the queen out of the way. So at this moment in time, it's looking pretty drawish. And now we're trying to find the favourable position to see whether or not we can get this queen off the board. So we're dancing around, trying to jostle to get that better position. And slowly but surely feeling a little bit more content with the pawns that we've got on the B, C and uh, D. So if we can get the centre pawns linked up, it might be a little bit stronger for us. So they're attacking our queen. So there's nothing much I would change here at all in any shape. Feeling fairly confident that we're jostling the right position. It is showing drawish at the minute, but I'm feeling that we're kind of slightly more advantageous with these two centre pawns on the C and D. Um, and we should be able to jostle some type of adv advantageous position. So at this point, I started looking at the clock. And one of the key takeaways from this particular game is, so we got the king with a check on so we can get the queen off the board so now it's showing drawish at the moment but it all depends on the position of our, our king so it's saying the king should have moved to king d5 but we wanted to make sure that the, their king couldn't come down anywhere and then we move the king up and now we can start hitting the bishop and they've got 15 seconds left so and it's got zero increment so a bad habit that I tend to do is, if they've got not, not got much time on, and I've seen other players do it as well, is that, oh, well, you just do any kind of move because, you know, you, they're not going to win, you beat you on time. I'm going to cheer, I'm going to try and change that practice because what I need to be practicing is quality play all the way through, no matter if I am winning on time or not. Try and keep that quality play going. All the times where it works probably is where you're not actually winning on the board. Um, so then you can just do any old kind of move just to make the opponent think and make them lose on time. But when you're in an advantageous position, I think it's better to practice quality moves uh, going forward. So we moved our king, basically just to give them something to think about. The king is supporting this pawn here. So those moments that they took to actually take the pawn... Yeah, so that's three seconds that they utilise to actually take that pawn. So the seconds were going down. So it, the technique worked. It's just that really going forward, I want to practice quality manoeuvres. And quality manoeuvres really would have been just basically pushing the pawn here like that, just blocking it all off. You know, and then if the king king's not going to move anywhere, maybe it goes there. But we slowly but surely start inching up and using the power base of our pieces so that's what would have been stronger. But because their time was running out, we could really kind of do anything. They're on eight seconds now. And there's not much major stuff that's going on and they eventually timed out. So, yeah, big takeaway from that. If I knew then what I know now, it would be to just look at doing quality endings, even if you're advantageous and the opponent's time is running down. Keep the quality of the movements going. It does enhance your game.